This wild story began when a Reddit user shared his truly bizarre find online. After he posted a gold-glowing rock he thought might contain uranium, the internet went nuts. But we need a backstory. It'll make everything even more exciting. Garrett Tennis, a 25-year-old man from New Hampshire, explained that it all started around 30 years ago, when his dad visited Ruggles Mine. He found an amazing rock. It glowed like a neon sign when he shined a UV flashlight on it. No wonder he thought it must be something special. So he took the rock with him and hid it under his father's shed. Fast forward to the present time. Garrett and his dad decided it would be fun to check out his grandfather's place to see if that rock was still there. Well, yes, it was still there. So Garrett took that glowing rock home. He was super excited to put it to the test. He grabbed a Geiger counter, that's that cool gadget that measures radioactivity, and then he made a mind-blowing discovery. The Geiger counter hit a staggering 3,000 counts per minute of radiation, which is way above normal levels. Now, let's put this in perspective. A reading of 100 CPM is considered a warning level. So when Garrett saw 3,000 CPM, he knew he was dealing with something serious. Those CPM measurements tell you how many radioactive particles are floating around. While our bodies can handle low radiation levels, long-term exposure can really increase the risks of terrible illnesses. Well, later, Garrett learned that the rock contained a substance called gummite. That's a radioactive material made up of uranium and other radioactive stuff. The real danger comes from touching the rock and then accidentally inhaling or swallowing dust from it. That's when things can get really serious. Since finding it out, Garrett has been super careful to keep himself and his family safe from that glowing menace. But let's get back to that Reddit post Garrett made. It set off a heated discussion. One Redditor wrote that the rock might be uranium ore. He told Garrett to be super cautious. They pointed out that while uranium emits particles that can't really penetrate your skin, the real danger comes from the particles getting inside your body. And since the rock was described as crumbling, there probably was a risk that those particles could become airborne, leading to serious health issues. Well, the tension was rising. Then, the CEO of a uranium mining company explained to Newsweek that while 3000 CPM was a high reading, it was not unusually harmful to people. Such levels are like those of the rocks you'd find at uranium exploration sites. Well, that was a relief. But this staggering discovery can serve as a powerful reminder to always be cautious with weird finds. Whether it's a glowing rock or something odd you spot outdoors, you never know what you might be dealing with. Some beautiful things hide fatal dangers, like this mineral. Chalcanthite dazzles with its brilliant blue hue. Just look at it. Has it come from the stars? Nope, it has an earthly origin. It's just a hydrated, water-soluble copper sulfate and it serves as an especially important source of copper ore. At the same time, when this stuff encounters moisture, it can dissolve and recrystallize. And no one wants this, since it can potentially lead to copper poisoning of the entire area. Plus, keep in mind that it's toxic to people. Well, there's two strikes right there. Or look at this beauty, Stebnite. It looks like something that belongs to the Game of Thrones fantasy drama. Well, if we speak about poisoning, definitely. Stibnite is a highly toxic mineral. And still, for thousands of years, people used a paste made of this mineral in cosmetics. They thought it made eyebrows and eyelashes look better. But the worst thing? The mineral was also used to craft eating utensils. You can probably predict the outcome. Hmm, poisoning. The next perilous material on our list is arsenopyrite. It's an iron arsenic sulfide with a slick metallic steel look it's bound to catch your eye. But, of course, it's not as innocent as it seems. Mostly found chilling in hydrothermal vents, it often hangs out with gold deposits. Now, here's the worst thing about arsenopyrite. When it gets exposed to air and water, it oxidizes. And then, boom, soluble arsenic floods into the environment. It wreaks havoc on ecosystems and is toxic to humans, too. Well, next up, we have galena, your go-to material if you're looking for lead, one of the world's most important ores for producing stuff. It's got a cubic structure, which makes it look cool. 
As a bonus, it's also a solid source of silver. Now, you can handle galena without any problems, but as long as it doesn't break down into lead dust. Because that dust is toxic. If you breathe it in or swallow it, say goodbye to your health. Lead poisoning is no joke. Moving on to the nightmare fuel known as Hutchinsonite. This one's packing not just arsenic, but also thallium and lead. Thallium, by the way, is tasteless, just like my jokes, and extremely toxic. Once, it used to be the main element in rat poison and insecticides. So yeah, we've got quite a cocktail of dangerous elements in this material. If you come across it, steer clear. Exposure might literally be fatal. Anyway, look at this rock. It's so pretty. Well, don't let the enchanting orange-yellow color fool you. Orpiment, which is the name of this mineral, is life-threatening. This arsenic sulfide mineral pops up in hydrothermal vents and hot springs. Shockingly, people once used it medicinally in ancient China and even tried to alchemize it into gold. Spoiler alert, it didn't work. And they probably just ended up with arsenic poisoning. When orpiment gets mixed with oxygen, it releases arsenic. So if you ever find yourself close to this beauty, well, think twice. It's time to talk about stunning torbernite. This hydrated green copper phosphate is found in uranium-rich granites, and yes, it's radioactive. Not only does it naturally emit radon gas, which is a big contributor to serious lung problems, but if you spend too much time around it, well, you're playing a high-stakes game with your health. Uranium and radon exposure is not something you want on your resume. And now for the grand finale, cinnabar, a highly toxic mineral. This deep red mercury sulfide is the primary source of mercury. In the past, it was used for everything from trading to makeup to art. The name comes from the word meaning dragon's blood. If that's not metal, I don't know what is. People mined cinnabar from volcanic rock, roasted it to extract mercury, and sometimes ended up with a side of mercury poisoning, which is pretty bad. Cinnabar can vary in color from red-orange to deep red-purple. When pigmented, it's called vermilion. It was used to paint human bones as tattoo dye in cosmetics and to decorate buildings in ceramics. In the Middle Ages, it even served as ink. In different cultures, people use cinnabar in cosmetics as rouge. Little did they know. Renaissance painters love vermilion too. For example, Botticelli used cinnabar in several of his pieces, including Mystic Nativity. Rembrandt also used vermilion, for instance, to paint the dress of a woman in Belshazzar's feast. Now, of course, using cinnabar comes with risks, because when this material gets heated up, it releases toxic mercury vapor. When encapsulated in oil paint, it is less hazardous than in water-based paints like egg tempera. And please avoid using cinnabar or vermilion in dry forms, such as pastels, even with good respiratory and skin protection. The residues of this pigment can pose serious health and environmental risks. And now, here's a fun, or not so fun, fact for you. Do you know Artex, the textured coating that used to go on ceilings and walls? Well, it contains asbestos. From the 1950s to the 1980s, that bumpy stuff often had up to 3% asbestos mixed in. Now, asbestos is dangerous if it breaks down because those tiny fibers can get into your lungs and cause all kinds of bad, bad problems. Most manufacturers stopped using asbestos in the early 80s. But if your home was built before 1999, there's a chance it's still hanging around. So don't go drilling or sanding that stuff without getting it tested first. You don't want to mess with asbestos. It's a slow predator that waits decades to strike. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.